nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Uh, we started to let everybody know we had uh, uh, executive session talking about personnel matters uh, for today. Any public comment, Mr. Hanson? Do we? We just uh, to celebrate who we are. Dave yeah. Hanson, I live over on Lotus Lane. I'm just curious if we have an update on Deep Creek and Percy on the Road. The end. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'll sit down now. It is coming up on the code report. Okay, um, it's coming. We, we okay. have been taking some steps and we're okay. doing some investigations. Because it, it hasn't fallen on the wayside. Okay, we are it, it's been this. three years or more uh, that we've been. Know, and she's good. She'll, she'll get around you. I know. <laughs> so we're finding. But yes, we are still working okay. on it. Don't, don't give up on us yet. You'll be seeing something soon. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll get there. Uh, anybody else? I'm sorry. Mr. Darby? Uh, yeah. Or Mr. Bauer? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, about a week ago, Bill asked me to uh, call me, asked me to do uh, a little bit of homework um, about the audit committee because he came up with, the, I believe it was the financial committee suggestion. Is that a Yes, if somebody had come in, we had brought it up. Um, so I was doing some looking online and I had a good conversation with Sean. Um, and I just wanted to come back and tell you all a bit about it just so everybody kind of understands the audit committee. Um, right now the audit committee is doing all it can within the bounds of the law. If we do much more or any more, uh, we'll be stepping outside of that, which is not something we want to do. Um, just to reiterate, the primary, uh, primary thing the audit committee does is it sets compensation for supervisors um, in staffing positions, which is all they all. Um, we also approve of the third party, uh, third party audit, and the third party audit, again, is done for legal reasons. Um, it just, if, if, if on the legal side happens, it's a lot easier if it's done through a third party. Um, after our conversation, Sean and I, um, we're doing some digging and there were a couple of good training resources that uh, we might want to recommend the Township Bank, where I believe it was GFOA, um, which just kind of would give, uh, would improve the knowledge of the budget and audit process for the audit committee. Right now, there are no requirements for training for the audit committee, um, and Wait. that's because of the standard and law of the Commonwealth. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, there's no training requirements um, of audit board members in the second class township code. Right, and so rather than creating that requirement, we're just, our oncoming board uh, recommending or suggesting that we uh, get this membership for the GFOA so that our audit committee has some resources to rely on and over knowledge. Uh, well, besides that, that was about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Can you just, what does GFOA stand for? That's the Government Finance Officers Association. So a membership for an elected member um, like Darby uh, would be $75 annually and it would entitle them to a suite of um, online trainings as well as access to uh, local trainings that GFOA has for you know various topics in government finance. So none are specific to auditing. They traditionally, uh, or actually I, I shouldn't say that. I don't know that any uh, may not be, but they're typically uh, a training resource for township finance department staff. But seeing as how the audit committee is looking over the budget and the audit of the budget, uh, it may you know give them some useful knowledge to apply to their their role. I appreciate it. That's what I was looking for. <coughs> Anything else, Gordon? Oh, uh, no, that's everything. Ah, perfect. I appreciate it. Anybody else public comment? Perfect. Uh, Bill, do you have a chance to review the uh, minutes for October 2nd? Yes, I do. They do appear to be correct. Yeah, I read those earlier as well. Uh, Miss Lisa wasn't here for the meeting, so she couldn't vote on it. Okay. Uh, so. I make a motion to accept meeting minutes as printed for October 2nd and September 11th. 
<coughs> Second. Aye. Aye. Uh, moving along to report. Uh, Sean, can you read the Treasury's report for Yes. So, I'm sorry, can I interrupt? Don't you have September 11th to approve? We did. They did approve both at the same time? Yeah. Oh, you approved both. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you say both the dates. Thanks. Sorry. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. For the month of September 2024, revenue collections are at 80.67% of the budget for the nine months ending in September for the general fund. Real estate tax collections are at 99.61% of the budget. Real estate collections are similar to the prior year as the majority of collections are during the discount period. Real estate transfer taxes are at 89.27% of the budget and less than the prior year by $14,054. The earned income tax, uh, which is one of the larger revenue sources for the township, is at 84.96% of the budget and more than the prior year collections by $30,440. Interest income uh, continues to exceed budget expectations. Interest income is at 177.52% of the budget ahead of last year. State revenues and entitlements, including the pension state aid for foreign firefighter insurance tax <coughs> revenues were received uh, in September. We have 60 days to pay these funds out to PMRS and Volunteer Fire Relief Fund. Uh, that is one of the items in this month's check, uh, check run for I believe 26,000 and some odd dollars. Uh, total revenues collected are less than 2023 by $92,717. This is largely due to the timing of receipts of the PennDOT winter road contract revenue and state pension revenue, uh, which were received in February 2023 for 2022. Uh, so this proceeds from the sale of fixed assets and the DCNR grant. Uh, expenditures paid are at 39.94% of the budget as we budgeted to use the American Rescue Plan money this year and uh, for the road project, but have not expended two of the large items to date. Uh, and also there is one CD that will mature in October for the water fund in the amount of $150,000. Uh, Mr. Moyer. Good evening. Billy, you make a motion there, Billy, to uh, pay the bills there? I will make a motion to, we have a list of bills we take here, haven't we? Yeah, right here. You got yours on the back side. Down here, Sean put it down here for us today. You didn't read that yet. There you go. Are you approving the checks? No, we didn't move them yet. No, we didn't move them yet. Right. You say you just Make read the treasurer's report, right? Yes. For the one. Yes. Okay. Right. Make a motion to approve the treasurer's report as read. The amount of 176, 853, 57. Uh, and I think I read that right. I don't have my reading glasses. Is that what that was? 176, 663, 57. 57. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Plymouth community, are they there? Are they here? Yeah, they're not. I don't think they'll be here. Um, so in total, we have 33 calls that Plymouth Ambulance responded to, uh, 21 at Frederick Living, which brings the <coughs> date to, to 271 for Upper Frederick Township and 135 to Frederick Living. Okay. Fire? Uh, Jeff Stein, Deputy Chief. Uh, for the month, we had 13 total calls. Uh, we're at 130 calls for the year. Got uh, 319.75 hours within the uh, for, for the month for volunteer hours, and the total this year is just under 4,300 hours. I did uh, want to bring up. Is it here? Just things coming up right now. We're doing a 4-H coat drive, and there's a box at the station. If anybody's interested in bringing up coats, um, 
we'll, have, we'll be collecting them up at our station. We're there Mondays and Wednesdays. Um, anything else? Dave Wynn will be up there this week. Mondays and Wednesdays That's from 7 to about 8.30, 9 o'clock. Yeah, in the evenings. Uh, I did want to point, I said I would mention it for Green Lane. They're doing a haunted hayride this weekend, uh, Saturday, the 12th. 5.30 to 9.30, the gates will close at 8.30 if anybody's interested, it's free to the public. We'll be down there parking cars and helping out. And I think that's about that. Any questions? No, sir. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Miller Services. There you go. Uh, Parking on the cross side. Uh, run pretty good. I installed a new uh, Rasin waste pump, uh, wire, installed it, wired in a new 440 pump and clarifier too. Um, had a DEP visit on Monday, surprise visit. Went pretty well, <laughs> surprised me, just walks in. and um, My clarifiers didn't look good, but he didn't give me a violation because my effluent was clear. The stream was nice. Uh, the only water in the stream is from the treatment plant. And uh, there was minnows swimming, so he said, you're doing something right. <laughs> so uh, so uh, that was good. Uh, for the water plant, it took the chlorine testing meters of the Reading uh, Suburban Lab. They got to get quarterly checked. That's a DP requirement. They just check the calibration. Um, Ivy Ridge, I had an S the one SBR wasn't operating properly. Sometimes that a clear effluent, sometimes be a little cloudy. Uh, finally found I had an intermittent uh, float switch, which is sometimes it works, sometimes it didn't. So I replaced that and we're all good. Okay. Um, the only thing that with uh, Perkin and Crossing, the, what caused my clarifiers to get bad was the Allen pumps stopped working. And they, they're just really sensitive. It's, they're cheap ones, and because uh, it's a lobe type, and now when you have two lobes, then it pinches the hose. And I like to get rid of them and get a all blue white company. They're a good pump, and they're not real expensive. They're twelve hundred a piece. Versus, uh, you could go up to five, six thousand for a chemical pump. These are, these run around eight hundred. The ones we currently use. The ones I have, yeah. And for 12, we get a little bit better pump. And it's going it's to be more heat. heat. And I mean, I, I won't have the problems I'm having. But a lot of times the out pump just stops working on and off. And it's so sensitive, like if the hose has just moved a little bit, then it doesn't work right. And, you know, so a windy day, it just, you just, you get what you pay for, really. Okay. Now I use them at Ivy and, uh, in the building for the chlorine so these won't be wasted i'll be able to use them for chlorine um, as well yeah um, but the blue white they have three loads so it's a lot more um, stable and i used them years ago at other plants and they're really consistent and they're really um, you could buy a gearbox you can buy different brushes for the motor so like the other ones if it motor goes bad or screwed you got to throw the whole thing away this one you could buy blue white. You can buy all the little independent parts to fix them. Um, so the, usually the brushes just go bad on the motor. The motor don't go bad. So you just you know cheap brushes. You just change them and you're back in business. What's the warranty on it? I don't know. Can you get us some so just a little bit more information? Okay. On it? Yep. Cost breakdown, all that warranties. Yep. No problem. I'm all about longevity and saving pennies. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, uh, everything else is fine. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Building inspector report. Did you forget my skimmer Did I? Oh, yes. No, I didn't. Did I? Yes, you did. No, I went from, oh, public work. <laughs> <laughs> I, guess I, did. I didn't see Steve sitting there. <laughs> 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 so, uh, but I rode over it. Forgot something. You forgot something, or I forgot I something forgot else. Something. Oh, good. <laughs> I, I, I'd like to swing back because I know it's going to be brought up. I asked uh, on the 19th of this month, we were invited to Board Town Island Parade. I had uh, asked for permission, it had to go across the board, and I meant to bring it up to you today again. I forgot to put that on the, uh, the agenda. I apologize. Uh, so, 
at the beginning of the year, the board authorizes the fire department to take place, to take part in activities um, for the year. Sure. Um, I believe we can amend the agenda to include this because it doesn't include expenditures. expenditures. Yeah. Um, so this would just authorize by motion to allow Upper Frederick Fire Department to participate in the Boyer Town <coughs> Parade. So you just gotta actually take two steps. You gotta one step is to make a motion to add it to the agenda and get that approved. And then the second step is to actually make the motion all arise on the go. Sorry. Okay. So I make a motion to add the approval for the fire company to attend the Boyer Town Parade uh, to the agenda this evening. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And then uh, I make a motion to approve to authorize uh, FD eighty seven to attend Boyer Day uh, Parade. Second. I approve all of them. I all of them. I That's all right. That's fine. No Sorry about that. I normally read last month's report versus this month, and I didn't do it. So I lost it myself. <coughs> okay, and that brings us back to water sewer. Public works. Public works. Public works. <laughs> <laughs> Number three. I can do it again. <laughs> so for the month of September, Public Works uh, was pretty busy uh, conducting seasonal mowing for parks, building grounds, and the sewer plant, road maintenance, and base repair at Pinebox, Swamp Creek, and Woodland. Uh, the Faust Road project's going well, moving along rather quickly. Uh, there was also some cross pipe um, installation or repair at Keystone Road, um, Kaiser. Uh, Kaiser Road, excuse me, uh, redone and uh, paved over. Of course, uh, they participated in Community Day, which went, uh, I think, very well considering the weather. Um, they're be beginning the last round of roadside mowing, so that is likely completed by now, actually. Monthly water meter reads and start of the intersection and overhauling limbs in prep for fall and winter and various work orders. Um, as far as equipment, a, uh, our backhoe and our loader uh, both had their 500 hour service done. Uh, that'll be in the check list as well. I noticed that when we sent the graph tractor, we didn't do that on our cell phone. Um, now it's the building inspector. It's, Actually, it's a civil engineer's <laughs> first guy. <laughs> Will you put those places on next time? <laughs> <laughs> they don't have the daggone reading things in them. Well, okay. Once, um, I'm sorry. LTL has updated the engineer report for the month of October. Sent that over to uh, Sean for uh, insertion into your uh, booklets there. I can answer any questions, but really the uh, only updated information in there is the progress on uh, Faust Road. Um, you should be getting the uh, weekly progress reports, couple photos, uh, work that's been completed, work that's currently going on, and work that is anticipated uh, moving forward. So hopefully you guys are getting that information to kind of keep you updated. But uh, really where we're at now is we pretty much finished the roadside work, in installation of inlets, swales. A lot of the grass is, is uh, already filled in. <clears throat> the uh, soil stabilization has gone well. We've had a couple of minor changes or pickups, but just different site conditions. Nothing really that's uh, super exciting. Um, <clears throat> and uh, worked really well with the contractor. Steve's helped out a little bit here and there. Contractor's done some extra stuff for us, no problem. We've had some issues with Pico. Keep driving the trucks in the swales and messing things up, and the same thing goes with Promark. They, they can't seem to keep the, their on the, on, the, on the road. But uh, we're working through that pretty much finished everything other than the roadway. Starting tomorrow, we'll be uh, doing the base repair milling. So the road's going to look, uh, it's certainly going to be a mess. I'd highly recommend avoiding Faust Road completely uh, for now, probably for the next two weeks. We are on track. <clears throat> uh, weather has been helping. And then after that, we'll be doing a uh, attack coat, a uh, scratch crown on the road, and doing an overlay. Tying all the driveways in doing uh, some aprons and, and things like that. Uh, we'll start with uh, 73 up to uh, Little, and then once that's done, we'll flip everything over, and then from 73 to Little will be wide open, ready to go, and then we'll shut down, you know, Little to Southport Station while we're doing that, because 
Uh, we don't want any traffic on there other than what we have to to maintain access to local uh, uh, residents. But the best way to put that road down is single pass. Uh, we don't have joints. The less joints, uh, the better for the for the township. So that's what we're going to uh, try to do. Um, and we'll keep you keep you in the loop, keep you updated. But uh, we are on track to finish uh, by the the due date. Oh, perfect. I did notice when you tore up the place, traffic slowed down a little bit. I was kind of enjoying that. <laughs> yeah. Well, once the road is paved. You're not going to enjoy that. It's the fifth year before the term, oh, guaranteed. Yeah. They're going to be faster than they were before. So. Yeah. Don't believe it. Yeah. Okay. No. Nah. Yeah. Go for it. Okay. Nah, you're on. Okay. So uh, I'm kind of giving you an update for John Cox, who handles uh, building code and, and, and zoning. And really, the two main items that he has on his uh, report here are the 1847 Perkinsville Road and uh, uh, Vicki had uh, indicated that uh, we're working on that with the township, really the communications going with the uh, township solicitor and the supervisors and the township manager there to try to discuss different options, knowing that this has been a long, ongoing issue that really hasn't had a whole lot of progress. Uh, but uh, we're kind of going, uh, and uh, there's some more drastic measures being discussed. So uh, we'll be able to, to uh, let the public in when that can happen. So, um, and then the other item is the 1732 Becker Road, and that is, is kind of similar to, to that one. The, uh, it's being discussed again between the solicitor and the, the uh, supervisors to uh, kind of come up with uh, some options and the direction. And then once uh, once Altel gets some direction, John will, will move that forward as the, uh, the zoning officer. Okay, so that's really the extent of that. Other than the the uh, uh, building permits and inspections and stuff, which have been pretty routine. Okay. That one will post PC bill. You got that one, buddy? <laughs> Appreciate it. All right. Did, you, did we speak to, to that young lady on uh, Perky Overville Road? Yes, but we're not going to talk about that. That's what I wanted to make sure. Okay. Um, Planning Commission, Mr. Marriott, see how in the Yeah, well, the last meeting we uh. Did you stand up? Oh yeah. <laughs> Just so you can hear you. Sorry. <laughs> last meeting we worked on and moved forward on the uh, rezoning on R40 and R60, high density, medium density housing along the corridor, which is going to um, actually re reduce that by over 400 acres, uh, which is our fair share according to the Central Park Human Valley Regional Planning Commission and Planning Commission Montgomery County, um, which would be very, very beneficial for us, plus the school district as a whole. It would be rezoned back into uh, uh, rural preservation, uh, land preservation district, uh, which would basically be two acre, 80,000 square foot lots. Um, <clears throat> we also worked on, um, we're working on the cartways for any new subdivisions to go in, right of ways, uh, cul de sac turnarounds, um, sidewalk widths, and beauty strips. Um, we haven't finalized that yet. We're going to work on that at the next meeting. Um, we also did outside wood boilers, which we were looking at setbacks, stove height, uh, stack heights, and